Okay, hello, hello, Tyler Brighton here. I hope everything is going well. It's an exciting day in the AI world with the release of OpenAI's code interpreter for ChatGPT. On July 6, 2023, OpenAI announced that it will be available to ChatGPT Plus users over the next week. So if you are a ChatGPT Plus user, you do have access. I'll show you how you can get access to it. For a long time, many of us have had access to ChatGPT. There was a wait list for that. We got on. Most of us have tested out 100 million plus people is the big number here today. And although there's reports of traffic waning to the ChatGPT website, there's some conflicting information with, of course, iOS app being released. School is out for the summer. But with that came this release, which I think is one of the more exciting game-changing releases related to the type of power that AI can unlock in this kind of use case and in this scenario. I think this is the more practical way that AI will become powerful and really democratize the access to artificial intelligence, to capabilities that were formerly left to very manual tasks from developers and data scientists with a high level of acumen and experience dealing with these large data sets and doing all of this work. So super exciting time. A quick disclaimer from me. I am Tyler Brown, one of the co-founders of a company called Speak AI. We've been working since 2019 on basically helping people get access to language analysis? How can we democratize this process? How can we help people get insights from language data fast and with no code? And so with that in mind, I've spent a lot of time in this space. I've seen a lot of the problems that come with it. We've spent time iterating and innovating on the back end to make this possible as well on the front end interaction layer, especially to deal with audio video data and doing it at bulk. With that being said, I'm going to jump into a conversation that I was in with ChatGPT having this process for me the first time. One thing I wanted to do though quickly was show you how you can enable the code interpreter by going into the beta features within settings and then you can turn this on. And once you have that in the new chat, I can now fire that open and you can see GPT-4 code interpreter beta checkbox. And instead of, you can just send a message, but what this has also opened up is the ability to upload files. And there's a bunch of file types that you can upload. Specifically, you can see that here, the entire list. This is from a very fresh article, text, PDF, Word doc, JPEG. So images, there is CSV, lots of different file formats that are possible. One of the bigger ones that we've seen are CSVs. And if it has a header row and it's labeled properly, the understanding of it is quite incredible. In this case, I have gone through, I've uploaded, as soon as you upload it, that CSV is there. And you can see the name of all the columns and also a little description of each. Those descriptions were not provided. It was just understood by the engine and shows a base understanding of the type of data within it. Now. I did have some problems with the first upload. The one thing I tried was uploading an actual video audio itself. I said, I'm sorry for any confusion. I don't have the capability to process or analyze video content. So you can't just upload audio and video. I'm guessing at some point, especially with Whisper, with other tools that OpenAI is building, that this will become possible. But for now, it is not. And if you are interested in that, I would recommend still speak, which can handle all your audio and video at once and really opens up some incredible opportunities, filter, analyze that data, tag it, automate it, do some pretty powerful things. For now, what you then need to do is find other ways to upload, especially text data if you're looking to analyze like audio and video. That's primarily the lens that I'm looking through. You can do much more quantified, analysis of these large data sets and CSVs. I'm particularly interested in like unstructured language data. And so that's where I spent my time. It's also the data that I have at my hands. And for that reason, I'm here talking about that. I also tried to upload a PDF. Now the PDF that I uploaded was relatively benign. So here you can see the PDF. I, for some reason, I thought I just I thought this would work. So a couple of bugs and challenges along the way. You know, I said the text is not meaningful, but it was a transcript. 
I did try to then query it a little deeper and it was unable to do it. So I actually moved to a text file, which then allowed the engine to access the text data there. In that case, before I had asked to get some themes, it moved ahead with that thematic analysis and actually what I liked was it gives you a bit of an understanding of how it's doing it so it talks about topic modeling gives you a little bit of context gives you a bit of a description and then groups those words together for topics now was the output that great not necessarily again small sample set so maybe that's a bigger reason why and not necessarily the fault of the engine and it mentions topic modeling can be quite complex and the result may vary so that was my first go through what i did was just took that individual text file simple five minute video what i could say are what are the action items for the possible sales hire so this was me giving a brief to some people that we're hiring right now for a little bit of a demo. And again, not perfectly getting that answer. So a little bit of context lacking, but overall maybe a limitation of the data that I'm feeding it. So I then moved on to what I would say was a little bit more of a richer data set. I can show you actually how I did it. I have all these files in here and speak. I can hit name more. I can export and specifically what's really nice is there's one that's called media details and I can take that information and I can export that. So in this example, I'm gonna try taking these TED Talks, more export. I'm going to go to my CSV media details. I'm gonna not choose to display the speaker names or timestamps, so I'm not gonna make it too complex. I can now go into ChatGPT. I can turn on the code interpreter. I can hit plus, I can select TED Talks. You'll see that it is uploading, send the message, and we'll see it upload. Again, a good understanding of the data being uploaded and a nice structure of the information that comes out of Speak automatically. So I would like to visualize the top themes, top Bigrams and trigrams. Bigrams and trigrams basically meaning two words or phrases instead of just individual keywords and trigrams being multiple. So credit card fraud. So bigram credit card, trigram credit card fraud. And generally as you move towards that higher level, there's more context. There's maybe a deeper meaning, especially if that information is populating across multiple files at once. And so while it does that analysis, it will come back in a moment. Sometimes I notice with the code interpreter, it actually stops and asks, hey, do you want me to proceed? And in that case, keeping this chat open is important and it will go ahead and do this request about the bigrams and trigrams in a bar chart, show that visualization. You can see that's also debugging, which is great. It's basically cleaning the data. You can expand, show the work, and see the actual code that was run, which looks very similar to a Google Collab or any work that you might be doing in data science before this. Again, manually, that would require you to have a decent understanding and skill set to be able to do this, realizing it can't produce the answer and then moving forward. And you can see by asking it to do this, we are now getting the bigrams and trigrams. Now, in typical process of this work, you would actually remove stop words, which might actually clean up some of the results here. As you can see, these are not necessarily really meaningful results. So I wanna see if we can do that. The challenge that I had earlier with stop words is because it wasn't connected to the internet, it was unable to import a library. And so there are a lot of libraries that are available where it's an updated list of stop words and with that being said, it will import that library and use that to then clean the data. Now, with this limitation of not being connected to the internet, or at least the message that it gave me, it wasn't able to do that. And so the stop words were kept in, which is one of the reasons why when we look at the bigrams and trigrams in the TED Talk, that the results might not be as high quality as you would like. But in this case, it did work and we got a better 
response. And it will even give you the English stop word list here that it's printing out. The second round of this after a little bit of iteration cleaning, still not perfect, but starting up to give us some interesting insights. This text is in a lot of red here, but it is working. You can see some of the stop words if I highlight it. These would be removed from the text before processing the information and visualizing it to provide more meaningful or relevant responses. Often these might not add that much meaning or can just be over represented in the data because of the structure of sentences requiring them. Another thing when we're looking at data that you might want to know is what is common between these transcripts and what is different. So this is a sort of a big task that we're asking it, not that defined, relatively abstract. And in this case, it's actually going to tell us a couple ways that it would do this. So sentiment analysis, topic modeling, word frequency analysis stops and then asks me, hey, do you want help with this? I'm going to say, yes, please proceed. And when we open to expand, we can see the work that is going on. Relatively boilerplate analysis if you're doing this kind of work. The topics are not labeled, as you can see. That's the experience that I'm having to date. And that's interesting. It decided to say, hey, here's the top 10 common words that are appearing across these different talks, these 10 TED Talks. So it didn't give me the full response that I was looking for. So I'm drawing it a little deeper into this and saying, hey, what's, what's going on here? Tell me some unique keywords among each one of these TED Talks and then break it down by each transcript with that understanding of the CSV file that we put from the top there. So I'm hoping it's going to be media name. It might choose another option on that output. And it gives me a little bit of warning. It might take a bit. And now here we go. We have several unique keywords that are now specific to each file. So super interesting to see this come together. As you can see, it didn't, I could have specified maybe just give me the top five that are repeated by most popularity. It decided to print out everyone. So this could be going for a while now. So I'm going to stop generating. Another big part of processing text data is a process called named entity recognition, meaning can you understand and categorize information in that data? One of the most common ones is identifying locations. You can see that it would actually tap into a spacey model, spacey being very popular NER library that because of this current environment does not have the ability to give it to me, which is sad, but it does give me the code if I wanted to run this in my own capacity, which unfortunately I'm not going to at this moment for you, but that's okay. And this is another area I think where when I go in to speak as an example, that is already set up and there for you. So when I go, okay, great, location mentioned. And if I want to go to Explore Insights and see this at a higher level, I can do that. I can actually go Advanced Filter. I can add a condition and I can say Category Includes, and then I can show Location. And now we can then see the locations that have emerged from that data. And if I want, I can click in to see more. So we can see America was mentioned several times. I can click into America and start to get that dedicated report every time that it was mentioned and then jump to that exact moment in the chat. And where So a lot of power uploading your audio and video data into Speak that is doing a lot of the work that ChatGPT is doing, but allowing you to analyze several files at once, play it back. And when we look at the process that I'm first having in Code Interpreter right now, I'm seeing a lot of potential and raw power, but I'm also seeing some of the limitations for people who might be trying to do more complex analysis or multi-file or multi-data set or multi-source or multimedia analysis where some of these limitations at least currently are there, but might be overcome. One of the things I wanted to do, I wanted to take the locations and visualize it into a map, which I've seen uh, be pretty interesting. 
couple other things that I might say was, what is the average duration of the files? So I have a duration input up at the top here. So the duration of the talk in seconds, it will give me the average duration. And it's just, just a simple query that you might have in the data. I'm sure that this is simple sort of queries, but if you think of complex data sets with lots more information in here, it gives you some ideas of how you might wanna tackle that data and find some insights very quickly. Overall, I see, again, a lot of opportunity with ChatGPT Code Interpreter. This is just my first experience taking data from Speak, uploading it in, and doing some quick high-level analysis, producing some charts, some graphs, finding some of the capabilities, and then some of the limitations as I detailed at the start of the video and that you saw throughout this process. I obviously have this deep bias around Speak, but we've embedded these large language models right into the system, and I think it opens up a lot of capabilities beyond just the analysis that I showed you here today, allowing you to prompt from a high level, even with our new release, being able to take a trigger like a file being added to a new folder and then automatically running prompts on it to produce reports automatically and very conditional based off maybe a sales call versus a customer service call. I'm interested in will Code Interpreter have an API layer involved where these systems and this data are all fragmented and it doesn't quite give you the dedicated need or access or power that you may be looking for. And while in some cases, I'm super excited about Code Interpreter from my first test. I also see there's some challenges here that need to be resolved for this to be used in a major environment. However, you can see that even based off this work, while some of these things are relatively boilerplate code for this type of analysis, a lot of people haven't gone through this. And so it's super exciting to be able to just generate queries in natural language see responses, iterate on those responses, and then see what was actually happening in Python, in the code, so that you can build a deeper understanding of how to do this type of data analysis. And my own bias here around speak, of course, and then also just the deeper interest in natural language data shaped this video. However, once you get into larger data sets with you know, complex, column structures and lots of information that's meaningful. I think it just opens up a whole world of possibilities that I'm excited to learn about. There are some great articles on ChatGPT, on Code Interpreter specifically that I'll share in the video below. There are questions are whether ChatGPT and its Code Interpreter plugin replace data scientist jobs. I think in the current iteration, people who are data scientists, machine learning engineers, are probably not that concerned, but when we look at the iterative exponential rise of these technologies and OpenAI's ability to constantly evolve the product, um, even in the short time frame that they've been releasing these products, those concerns are possible. There are obviously safety concerns around data being uploaded and what does it do with that data? How does it store it? Some of those have been answered in saying that if you're interacting it as a plus user or an API user, that it's not being stored. But there are still challenges and concerns about that. And even recently, a data leak that could raise more concern. And interestingly, as someone who follows this, who spends time in it, who's building products around this type of space, it's super interesting to see the interest. And you can see these searches low showing on volume, but that trend line really going up. So there's gonna be some hype here because of the release. It will eventually be released to the broader public, which will show even more excitement. There are these ideas that the hype is there, the testing is there, and then people are maybe having this expectation curve that is not fully being met. But I think this release with Code Interpreter is especially powerful and may be able to fight through some of that disillusionment that people may have early from just some of these experiences where it doesn't fit the full use case and work. If you're interested in learning more about Speak specifically, all the great analysis that is possible, how you can even prompt and hold this data at a high level to get really incredible results, how you can automate 
this, integrate it with in different systems, please feel encouraged to send me a note, send me a message. I have a lot of love for this space. It's a super exciting time for us all here. And I think continuing to drive through the experience together is one of the best parts as we all figure out how do we use this technology best? What can we do? How can we democratize access to this? And where is true value lying in this almost endless sea of possibilities? And if you have any thoughts, ideas, as I share my first experience here with ChatGPT's code interpreter, I would absolutely love to hear. I really appreciate you checking this video. I hope you got a little bit of insight out of it, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.